It's like that the art itself has a will of its own that you have to just sort of uh, pay attention to, you know, as you go ahead and make it. Uh, it's not about forcing it, you know, to do what you want it to do, although there's an element of that always in it. But there's also the kind of greater reality that, uh, that the conditions are so variable and they change so often that you need to be paying attention, you know, to uh, what it needs, to, what, what the needs that it has, not the needs that necessarily you have. The printmakers have come up to me and say, I didn't know you did printmaking. And I said, I don't, you know? I don't do printmaking. You're just being kind of fooled, you know, by the uh, character of the surface of the painting that you're looking at. It's actually not a print. These techniques basically came from looking at etchings and engravings and trying to think about like how I might paint in a way that would mimic those conditions. This painting I started first by laying down, you know, a whole kind of color field, this blue, having rolled it out to create these sort of transitions. I then will blot the surface with crumpled newspaper to give it a bit more kind of atmosphere and texture. And now I'm just beginning to sort of develop some kind of uh, form improvisationally across the surface using uh, liner brushes and then just uh, sort of moving in a kind of uh, call response characteristic where I make a mark, I determine what the next mark should be and I gradually build the form to my satisfaction. For me, there's never a day when I don't want to paint. When I don't paint, it's because I have some other things to do, like teaching. I've taught at RISD since 1978. I came to RISD as an undergraduate in 1966. I grew up in Massachusetts, not that far away. Braintree, Hanover, East Bridgewater. And I uh, went to graduate school, University of New Mexico. And after graduate school, I was very fortunate to get a part-time job at RISD working in the Freshman Foundation. I did that for a few years. I was invited to uh, join the painting department, uh, where I've been ever since. My job in the painting department, when I am not the chair of the program, is usually to teach uh, sophomore painting and graduate students. I can't quite imagine teaching any place better than the School of Design. If you're going to spend your time away from the studio uh, helping other people with this uh, process and this understanding of this kind of complex condition of painting, you know, I couldn't have a better situation in terms of ambition uh, and talent. I'm around real art all week. Real art. It's a joy. It really is. And now, Rhode Island has been the uh, place that we have lived the longest. For me, I paint up very close to what I'm doing. I create a great deal of uh, kind of conflict and even chaos. And then I go about trying to figure out how to order that conflict and that chaos into something that is uh, some form of resolution where there is a sense of order amongst all of these moments that are disordered. I love painting. I have loved painting since I was a teenager. Fundamentally, I've wanted painting to be something that I consider to be a language of my own, you know, and not somebody else's. Create work that is challenging to me in terms of how I make it and how I think about it, and how I want other people to, to either reject it or receive it. It's going to require a kind of uh, a gestation, really, not only for me, the maker, but also for the viewer. 
If it sits around for four to six months and I realize I'm still satisfied with the condition, you know, then I am, uh, uh, I'm going to leave it alone. That's what I consider it to be done. That's the gestation period. It's partly thinking you've come to that end. But when, in, when in fact, a painting uh, does not require an end. It, you know, painting, you could work on the same surface your entire life. But it slowly and, and in its own way seems to come to a point where it satisfies me. Sometimes it requires uh, destroying a lot of information that took me a long time to make. That's very hard to do when you work on something uh, in a kind of painstaking fashion, which I do. I I've managed to find a way that uh, pleases me, that, uh, that at the same time challenges me and forces me to confront what is basically an incredibly frustrating activity but also at the same time a very wonderful activity. There's nothing, you know, I, I, I just don't know. I mean, I've had primarily one goal, you know, as a painter, as a beginning uh, goal, which is to uh, make sure I want to get up every day and do it. Well, it's, it's, you wonder, it's like, who the hell cares, really? I mean, I care, but I don't have the kind of ego that makes me think so anybody else should care what I care about or what I what I do. I'm gratified and grateful when somebody does, but I don't expect it. I'm often surprised by it. I really don't care for the art market. The gallery scene in this world has uh, sort of put pressures, I think, on artists who have to make a living selling their work to uh, produce more work quickly and generate a kind of branding of their personality and themselves in ways that help the gallerists uh, sell their work by selling them uh, as personalities too. I spend very little time trying to develop gallery relationships and shows, the shows that I have, and I have them regularly. I've had been very fortunate these last couple of years. I've been very pleased with the reviews and the uh, interest in my work and the sales that have begun to be generated, but I don't care about that. I really don't. I just, uh, I'm very comfortable with my life. I don't need more money. You know, I don't, and I don't care about the recognition from those I don't know. I care about the recognition from the people I do know, and they have provided over the years just enough satisfaction that maybe I'm not crazy and maybe the work I'm doing is, is of interest to somebody else besides just myself.